Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We're glad that you are joining us. Um, a couple of announcements. Diana Harbreck, who used to be a member here, had surgery this past week and is doing well, but she asked that you keep um, her in her prayers as she recovered. She had a triple bypass. So she's doing really well um, eating, so we're um, very thankful for that. So keep her and her family in your prayers this week. Um, there, are young, there are bags for our young people. There are sign-ups uh, in the entryway for ushers, community assistants, um, assisting ministers, acolytes, people to live stream. So please take note of that. And also for rally day, there's a sign-up sheet as we kick off the school year and all the fall activities. Offering can be placed in the plate at the entryway or using the QR code. This morning we're going to do communion differently again. <laughs> we're going to go to intinction and we'll have two stations. Um, I'll hand out the bread and then there will be, you're invited to dip the wine or in the grape juice. So I'll remind everybody again as we get closer to that. And then you're invited to join us for coffee afterwards on the patio. Are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Okay. Let us stand as we are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path but have chosen your own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seat at the house. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us accordingly to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, number 807.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are hardened and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the anthem. desire and I love 
I invite um, the kids forward for kids talk, and it's okay to clap. They're wonderful. I need some help today. Do you like balloons? What do you like about them? You get to play a game with them? Keep yuppie, how does that game go? Oh, and that nearly touched the ground. Hey, Maddie, would you like a balloon? Yes? Okay, because I, I need to give you a balloon, because I need your help today. Can you hold that? And Noelle's going to hold that. You're welcome. So we, do you like balloons? They always float away. Oh, I'm sorry that happens. Do you know that you can make animals out of balloons? Some people can. I can't. I don't have that skill. Yeah. Well, sometimes we are like a balloon, and we can get all puffed up. So I need your help. So let's see if we can blow this up. So I'm going to say a few things, and we're going to blow it up. Now, I'm not very good, so I need your help. Are you ready? Okay. So when we think we're really good, we... oh. Noelle's blowing it up. She's really good. I am not very good at all. Can you hold it? Oh, good. That balloon's all puffed up. And you know what? Some people have better skills than others. Can you hold it there so it doesn't go unpuffed for me? Yeah, that's about all I can get it to. Uh, you know what? I don't have that talent. But, but Noelle has that talent, and that's awesome. So it took a lot for you to blow that balloon, right? A lot of air. And you know what? Sometimes we like balloons, but sometimes Jesus in our story today is going to remind us that we, don't, that we don't have to be the best at everything, and that we can always be humble about stuff like me who, yes, you can keep that balloon, who, um, don't, let, don't let it go yet, don't let it go yet, blow it up more. You let the air out, yep. You, get, you, got, you made it all puffed up, right, and big? And sometimes we get puffed up and big. Yeah, that's about all I can do too. I need more practice. That is awesome. And so, can you tie it? Oh, you can make noises with it too? You have a lot of talent. That is so awesome. Did you practice that? You just did it. Well, sometimes some people can't do it and some people can do it. But you know what? At God's table today, everyone's welcome, even us who can't do it. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. Should I give some for you for, to give to your brother, too? Okay. Is that okay, Mom? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I will give you one for Chris, because I have a lot there. So, you know what? So, Jesus reminds us that everybody is welcome at God's table. How cool is that? Yes. Yep. I will give you more after church. How's that? <laughs> for just in case, okay? Because I have like 20 of them right there, okay? Okay. Okay. I can give you back. I can give everybody backup ones, okay? So remember that Jesus, even if we can or can't blow balloons, welcomes us at God's table. You ready to pray? Okay. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for welcoming us at your table. Yeah, you can let it out. Let out really quick. There you go. Okay. I got so big, right. Okay, let's pray quick.
because we could do this all day too. Okay, <laughs> dear God, thank you for welcoming us at got your table and welcoming everybody, the skills that they have and the talents they bring. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what? After church, I will give you more, okay? I'll give your brothers after church. You can take that one to your, your seat, okay? Yeah, you can. A reading from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of the lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the place of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then, disgrace, and then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. You may be seated. The table was set with the finest china. The food was prepared perfectly. The guests were invited to the table. 
Graduation from college was the big deal event in the Johnson family. There were three older children who had degrees and fine jobs, and now it was the fourth in line to shine. Randy, who had graduated in biosciences, started taking the chair of the seat at the head of the table, and that place of honor and celebration. And then he stopped. In just a moment, the son stopped and his father said, here, sit on the table at the seat of the side. Let us allow the commencement speaker to sit here at the head of the table. For he was the privileged guest, the guest of honor today. The importance of the Johnson family is to live a life of demonstrating love and hospitality. And when they were asked by the president of the college to host the commencement speaker after the ceremonies, they were delighted to do so. After all, he was the distinguished governor of the state. And as the governor moved the chair over and got ready to sit on it, mom said, stop. And said, sir, will you please not sit there. Will you indulge me for a moment? For it is fitting for our grandmother to take the seat at the table. But during that time, everyone was already puzzled because first Randy took a different seat and now mom chiming in was asking the governor to take a different seat. And she continued to explain we are so proud of Randy today, and we are so pleased to have our governor here in our home in this meal. But there is someone here today who is more responsible for this occasion. And she turned to the corner of the living room where a wrinkled old shriveled up lady, half dozing off, was sleeping in a chair with a smiling face. And she said, Grandma, would you please honor us today and sit at the head of our family table? With only graduating from grade school, she had the lowest of degrees. She had worked hard throughout her life. In this lesson that we're given from Jesus, Jesus chooses to dine with the Pharisees, despite their habits of watching him. This is not an unfamiliar scene to any of us, but Jesus uses this meal to teach a lesson about hospitality and manners. Throughout the story, the Pharisees intended to watch and scrutinize and examine who Jesus is and what Jesus does. And at this meal, with all the cards on the table, the guests wander around to take their places at the dinner table. With bold confidence, some guests sit at the place of honor for themselves, and others consider a smaller place for someone who might be more distinguished. This creates an awkward situation for both the host and the guest, those who want to ask and those who ask to be moved. Jesus says it is better to sit at the lowest seat and be asked to come forward than to sit at the place of honor. For all who have exalted themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus here also addresses the host of the dinner. He is concerned about the cycle of entertaining, where people continue to invite others to dine, trying to pay it forward for a previous meal. There is no end to that indebtedness. In fact, there is and can be a gradual escalation of trying to impress or outdo one another. But Jesus' approach to hospitality is different. Jesus says when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in this case, they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the cripple, and the lame, and the blind. That is not a common list of people that we invite to dinner. 
Throughout the Gospel of Luke, there is an emphasis on including the outsider. Luke's Gospel is all about taking care of one another. And especially when it comes to the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. It's repeated in Mary's song at the beginning of Luke in the first chapter, as well as the first sermon given by Jesus. The disciples are encouraged to go beyond giving food to the stranger, but actually eating and interacting with those who are humbled in life. In doing so, there is a foretaste of the feast of God to come through the banquet of heaven. It leads us to ask, how do we welcome those who are different from us? And there is a skeptical sometimes to that. How do we show God's foretaste of the feast to come? There once was a middle-aged couple who received an in invitation to an engagement party located downtown several hours from their home. The groom was the son of some dear friend and so they decided to make the trip, even though there would be very few people at the party. The party was at night, and the dimly lit streets made it difficult to find the house. They were greeted and luckily relieved to see balloons on a mailbox as the party guests started flowing in. As they walked up the driveway into the house, Everyone was quite friendly and welcoming. But then after a while, the couple became confused when they didn't see their friends. When the couple began asking people, they discovered that no one knew their friends. It turns out they were at the wrong house, at the wrong party. Their party was over on the next block. Somehow they had managed to stay for 45 minutes at the wrong party. They were horrified. But on their way out, the people shouted, it's okay to stay, come back and enjoy our party. Everyone is welcome here. How would you feel if you came to the wrong party. The host of these parties was welcoming, welcoming to the stranger. We would probably feel embarrassed as well. Whether the host is part of the important person and the guest, we are called each to celebrate at God's table. Jesus wants us to realize that we don't always have to be the host, that we can be the humble guest and even come to the wrong party. Jesus invites us to the table this morning where we are saint and sinner together, yet our sins are forgiven. We are welcome to eat and drink and be nourished and renewed in Christ's love because God first loved us. Where there is no boundaries and no limits, God loves us for who we are, whether we can blow up a balloon or not. God loves us for where we're at in life. God welcomes us to the table. God welcomes the stranger to the table. God welcomes us in our fears and our joys and our sorrows and our strengths and our worries and our burdens. We are brought, we bring them here, and Jesus, the host, wants each of us to be renewed and gathered around God's table. So come this morning and hear the words given for you, and knowing that Christ is the host of our table, today and every day. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus, number 802. Please stand as you are able.
Together, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us pray for all those in need. For the church and its leaders, we pray, uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people. Awaken your church a spirit of invitation that reaches every outward person. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the well-being of creation and its habitants, we pray, stir in us the relevant awe of beauty that nature gives us for the oceans and the lakes, the rivers and the streams, the forests and the deserts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the nations and all peoples in the world, we pray, sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equality for all, defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees, and all who are wanting to have a life that is free. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. For we pray for those in body, mind, or spirit to be present with those who live in isolation or fear. Especially we remember those who are denied or are incarcerated or detained. We pray for those in our midst who need comfort, who are sick and are grieving, those whom we know and those we don't know. For Diane, Nancy, Rose, Daniel, Kristen, Darlene, Sylvester, Heather, Kay, Helen, Wes, Lance, Jean, Kristen, our bishops Elizabeth Eaton and David Nagler, and all who have been affected by COVID-19, fires and storms, police officers, firefighters, medical professionals, and all who are serving on the front lines during these uncertain times. We pray for all our military chaplains and those serving our country, both at home or abroad. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. For the congregation of our saviors and all the ministries we do, we pray that God will enrich our teaching, our children, our youth ministers for this new year of learning. Embolden us each the witness to invite others to God's table. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. For all the saints who have confessed God's name, we give thanks. May we incline to promise and raise to the Savior of Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, your holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. Thank you for the gifts that you continue to give to our saviors. I invite you to remain standing for communion as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome at God's table. And just as a reminder, we're going to do intinction, so I will be giving you the bread and there'll be wine on, wine is the lighter color and the grape juice is the darker color.
and as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live with others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So before the benediction, um, I don't know if some of you are aware, but the Vons are moving, and some of them have already moved, but they're going to be doing worship via the internet, right, Terry? Yes. yes. So um, I would like to do a farewell and Godspeed to them, so I'm going to come over here so that they do not have to um, move, because we are going to deeply miss both of you. Um, and you can be seated for a minute while we do this. Um, <laughs> I'm just really sad that you're leaving, but I'm glad that there's Zoom, so. So Terry and Sylvester, you have been a part of this community forever. We are going to deeply miss you and wish you and your family that are moving the very best. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through these waters, I will be with you through the rivers, and they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, your Savior. In a reading from John, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will be the light of the world. And when we received you as members of our Saviors, we came to a community of rejoicing and love, and you shared in this mission with us. Now that you will be leaving, you're going to be sharing in this mission in a new way with new technologies and new communities to bless. We bless you as you move forward in this community. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for Sylvester and Terry and the entire Vaughn family, for the time they have shared with us and for the time they have been a part of our saviors. As they have been a blessing to us, so now we send them forth to be a blessing to others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May Almighty God direct your travels safely and your days and your deeds always. Amen. A round of applause. They're going to be missed. And I know you didn't know this was happening, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I invite you to stand for the benediction. May the God of peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit comfort and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is the Spirit sends us forth to serve, number 551.
Go in peace, shine the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.